Hallelujah. Amen. I have a problem. And my problem is all of you are doing like congealed milk. Sour milk. As if people don't understand that God saw us through 12 solid months. Hallelujah. As if people cannot tell that God saw them through 12 solid months. Do you even need drums to be able to thank God? Do you need someone leading worship for you to recognize that God has saved you? Anyway, may you not start your year like that in Jesus' name. So I was praying and I was asking God, Lord, do we even, are you going to be giving us words? Or we just come and, because we used to just worship and go. It wasn't any big deal. And I really don't mind that error. Not at all. But I heard God. And what I heard is what I'm about to share with you. Hopefully in a few minutes. And then those who have understanding will get up. Drums or no drums, guitars or no guitars. And they worship God like they know that their lives depend on it. Hallelujah. So I heard the word order. <laughs> O-R-D-E-R. Order. And when I, because I was sleeping and I heard it. So in my sleep I was trying to, you know, in my sleep I was putting the word together. And I was saying to myself, order. Ha. It, can, it doesn't mean that we, you know, I, I have a responsibility. I can make decrees. And I thought about that one. Then I remember that other, anyhow, I am excited. The word order means the arrangement or disposition of people or things in relation to each other according to a particular sequence, pattern, or method. The arrangement or disposition of people or things in relation to each other according to a particular sequence, pattern, or method. This is dictionary definition of order. Hallelujah. Amen. And then I saw another one. It says, order is an authoritative command, direction, or instruction. Order is an authoritative command, direction, or instruction. The third definition says, an order is a request to be served, to be seen, or to be assisted. So when you say I've ordered an Uber, it means you're going somewhere and the Uber is going to come and assist you to get to the place. When you say I've ordered a meal, it means that there's food, you're hungry, and they're bringing food to you so that the hunger will be assuaged. If you say... Um, Whatever it is you order, if you order a service, the point is, orders in, in, in this third definition enhances your life or brings ease to your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then I saw another, a left of field, and it's a biblical definition of the word order. That an order is a mandate. It is a precept. It is a command, and it is an authoritative direction. So when God said the word order, the first thing I remembered was Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, in verse 1 and 2, the Bible says that the earth was without form and void. Let's go to Genesis 1, 20, uh, 2 and, uh, 1 and 2. Genesis 1, 1 and 2. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. You know the rest of the story. As I started to look at Genesis chapter 1 today, the first thing that occurred to me was that Genesis chapter 1 is not just a, 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 um, a narration of the, the story of creation. Genesis chapter 1 is an attestation that our God is a God of order. And God is saying, I can see many things out of work. And I'm speaking order. Yes. 
<laughs> I woke up different this morning, differently this morning. Because then I thought about Nigeria and I said, aha, the day has come. Order. But the most vivid description of order I can give you a definition is I watch courtroom drama a lot. You know how maybe a witness or maybe um, the um, defense or the, you know will just go off on a tandem and begin to scream and talk or whatever. What happens? The judge comes down with a gavel and someone is screaming order in court. And that's what I see. That in my life, I can see God dropping the gavel. And he's saying, order. Oh my God. To order is to regulate, to methodize, systemize, or adjust. To regulate, to methodize, to systemize, or to adjust. So we use the word order... Or we begin to consider ordering anything because something is out of sync. I hope you can see it. And then in another situation, what that means is if your life is like in Genesis chapter 1, God is saying order because when God showed up, he said, let there be light. That was him reordering. Do you understand that? And then I saw Genesis chapter 2 verse number 5. Genesis chapter 2 verse number 5. I hope someone is paying attention. Because this word is so loaded. I don't have time for it today. But I know that somebody needs to go home and sit with it. In Genesis chapter 2 verse number 5. It says before any plant. I'm reading the New King, uh, King James translation. Before any plant of the field was in the earth. And before any herb of the field had grown. For the Lord had not caused it to rain on the earth. And there was no man to till the land. If you read some translations, it will say that, that the Lord did not rain on the land. You know, it did, because he didn't want the vegetation to grow. Because there was not a man to till the land. Again, um, 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 describes our God um, uh, um, clearly that God is a God of order. He didn't allow it to begin to rain until he was sure that there was someone to till the ground. Because the moment it rained, grass and vegetation will begin to come up. And if vegetation begins to come up, someone needs to tend the garden. Right after this, we see that he made man. He breathed upon the, uh, the, the nostrils of man. In verse 7, man became a living soul. Then God prepared the garden. And only after he prepared the garden did he bring the man to it. And he said to the man, tend and keep it. Because God, has, the way I see it, is that the only thing he will bring me to this year is what he has given me capacity for. I am so excited. I know it's not a word like inheritance, so people are not dancing. But it's a really powerful word and it's the exact word we should be opening this thing with. Order. So I see myself getting up and I see something is doing like this and I just look like I say, who? Tanya. Order. I see that I now have a word of command that I will just release once I see that something is, I, you know, I'm sniffling, I look at myself, I say, huh? Order. <laughs> because order is also a request to be served, seen, or assisted. Here's what I know. When I say order, angels show up. I say, Ki Kilefe, what do you want? <laughs> I heard the Spirit of God say to me, say, enough of the spirit of any howness. I was like, yes, so. I think this is really about a nation. Every spirit of any harness. Order! Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So I was looking at it and I realized that 
When we look at Genesis chapter 1 again, we think, oh, and God made, and God made, God said, and he made, God said, and he made, God said, oh, the account of creation is really exciting. God was just speaking, and it was done. And I realized that what had happened, because it's chapter 1, verse 1, says God made the heaven. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Everything is on that was God bringing order back to what he created. And I realized that order is proof that God is present. Kakatoba. You don't, I know someone hasn't gotten it yet. Maybe you'll get it in September. It will still be okay. So order is proof that the presence of that God is present. What that means, therefore, is that when something is going out of work. When you scream order because it is a request to be served, to be seen, and to be assisted, God steps by and says, Huh? Hallelujah. So I saw order. As I started to look at the word, I saw that. God is stepping up and he's I don't know whether the word is God is stepping up but you know just because my language is limited let me use that expression God is stepping up to ensure that every chaotic thing in our lives is brought under control because order is to bring under control you know that right but I also saw as I looked at the word order that God is also calling you and me to a place of responsibility. He's saying, be the mere enough of sleeping too much. He's saying, be the mere enough of talking too much. He's, be the, he's saying, be the mere enough of thinking too much. He's saying, be the mere enough of worrying too much. He's saying, be the mere enough of eating too much. Anything that looks like it, it, the, it is the root of disorder in my life, God is saying, take charge. Bring order. Because the way I'm saying it, heaven will bring order. But are you willing to bring order? Because every one of us needs to do something. Some of us, our monies are out of work today. And God is saying, bring order to that thing. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And somebody is saying, yes, from now I'm beginning to pray. It's not prayer. That, that is how you order money. I'm going to tell you how to order this thing soon. But the point I'm making is that God is giving both, us, both a charge to us and a promise rolled up into one. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I start to think about my life. It will mean that I, I honestly need to bring order to my life. I thought about my possessions and I heard the word, organize them. If you get to my daughter's room now, the bed is filled with clothes. Because the first thing I did, I don't know about when I hear God, I have this thing. I obey immediately. I've had clothes that have been stacked in bags for a while. I poured them on. No, you are not getting. Stop. I can already see some pedigree green here. Like, hey, they are coming. No, they are not coming. It's just that the skirt is somewhere. The blouse is somewhere. So I poured them out on my daughter's bed. And I said to my assistant at home, I said, when I come back today, we go find a skirt, we go find a blouse, we go iron them, we go put them together. Order. Organize your possessions. Some people don't know what they have. Not to talk of what they shouldn't have. Then I thought about my time. If God is saying order, then it means that there is no time to waste. So therefore, I am looking at my time and I'm saying it is time to begin to schedule this time. Let it be that before I say yes to someone, I go to my calendar. And I check it and I'm like, nah, Tuesday 10 a.m. is not good. I'm not going to be in Lagos. So we need to take another time. Scheduling is how we create order in our time. <laughs> then I, of course I thought about money. Because me, I don't like money to be out of work. Money out of work means I can't sleep, I can't eat, I can't talk, I can't... It, it, it makes me crazy. So I thought about money and I thought budget your money. That is how you bring order to your money. You budget it. 
Because when you are budgeting, you know what you've got to spend and you know what you have on God. So you won't put something, an item on the list that you can't afford or you don't have money for. Which means you won't buy something that is not useful in the moment. Budget your money. God is saying, I want you to be put together. And as I began to look at the book of Joshua, because we are using that book as our foundation's resource to move forward and do the things that God has called us in 2023, I realized that Joshua was a person of order. And I said to myself, what about my life? That is how I do daily. And I heard the word of God say, prioritize. Prioritize. Not everything that is urgent is important. When you prioritize, you will find that all those telephone calls you get, you take in the middle of something important like stepping out of church to go and take a call. Those telephone calls are not important. It's someone that the devil suddenly sent to you. To distract you from the word that is coming. They will begin to call you like life is going out. When you step out, say, I have ever spoken to you this year. I just say, make I greet you. That's why you called me ten, min- 10 times in two minutes. By the time you came in, you don't remember what, you did not hear what was said. You've missed it. Order. Bring schedule, uh, bring um, priorities to your life. From this time to this time of my life, every day belongs to God. I don't care who's calling, I'm not going to be talking to you. And if you, the people who are important to you, tell them. I do not like this echo at all. Hallelujah. And I thought about my accomplishments. My, the things that God has called me to, my efforts rather. I thought about my efforts, the things that are ahead of me to do. And I heard God say, set your goals. So don't just leave it to chance. If God has said, I want you to take 45 mountains this year, you need to put dates to them. You need to put budgets to them. You need to put resources in human form to them. Set your goals to your efforts. Because that's the only way you'd be able to measure your effort and determine whether you made sense. Set your goals. Then I looked at my accomplishments. You see, I said, oh, I have written five books. I've written ten books. I want to write fifteen more. And God is saying, for your accomplishments, some of us, how we did it last time is not how we did it this time. You know, we are all over the place. It's the grace of God that we are able to do the minimal that we are able to do. And God said, concerning your accomplishments, set processes. Set processes. Let it be that when you come in, this, you know, is your left hand that goes like this. Every single time. We know, somebody was telling me that um, her youngest son, when she wakes him up to go to, to go to school in the morning, if she wakes him up, he will say, Mommy, Nigeria is working. What the boy meant is, I will get up at 5.30 because that's when seven, uh, the CYM will be saying, Nigeria is working. So that's his alarm. If she wakes him before then, he will not get up. When he hears Nigeria is walking, he gets up. And this is a child. Processes. So he has measured it that every time he gets up at 5.30, he's ready on time and he leaves home on time. So nobody should wake him up at 5.15. Some of us have no processes. If I ask you how you cooked the jello fries last week, you don't remember. It was really tasty, but you can't remember whether you put the pepper first or you put the tomato last. It was a EJ, Eco J, you just try something. So it qualifies as concussion. The only problem is next week when you try to cook it, concussion again. That one, there's too much salt now. Because how do people get it done? They have their specific measurements for the things that they are doing. Processes. And this was weird. I thought about my house and he said documentation many of us live in homes that are not insured many of us have ACs they are not insured you know you can insure them right so when they go back within you know you just lose them These are all the things that the children of the world 
church do, do that the Bible says they are craftier than we are. Yet we are the ones that have the wisdom of heaven. I thought about my relationships and the Lord said two words, audit, then invest. Audit, then invest. Audit, then invest. You, there are some people in this season that you have outgrown. Because you are afraid to audit, you're carrying dead weight. Audit, then invest. As I went back to Genesis chapter 1, I realized that the words that were described, described in, because I had to check the root words for the first time, that the words that were described uh, without form and void are actually in the, in the original text, they mean extreme state of chaos. A strong state of chaos. Some of us, our lives feel like Genesis 1, 2, and 3. Oh no, verse 2. And the earth was with her and the
capacity and the open um, and the um, go ahead. Maybe I'll teach on on order at CYM. But for now, this is all you get to get. So I didn't make a promise. Nobody should send me a message and say, "Did you not promise to teach order?" I did not promise. Psalm sixty-two, verse number two. <laughs> they are laughing. He's my rock and my salvation. He's my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Can you see that? Acts chapter 2 verse 25. Acts chapter 2 verse 25. I think it was Peter that was speaking in Acts chapter 2 verse 25. And he said to them, For David says, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Peter was quoting David. The reason why you can find order is that God is in the midst of us. Do you understand that? God is in the midst of us so there ought to be order. People ought to st step into your space and just feel that your life is ordered. That your life is ordered. Hallelujah. So what I know is that God is in the chaos and he's saying, order. What I know is that faith in God brings us to peace and that brings order to in chaos. Because unless you are at peace, you would never find order when it seems like things are not together. Because for, you see, order is not only when one is after, uh, two is after two, one and three is after two. Order can come when Ephraim is blessed over Manasseh. <laughs> Hallelujah. When God created and, and it fell apart in Genesis chapter 1, guess what he, do, he did? He spoke order. He said, let there be, let there be, let there be. Brethren, if we are like our fathers, there are certain things that we are going to say, let there be, let there be, let there be, let there be. But when God created a human, the human being, do you know what he did? He didn't say, let there be, let there be. He gave us the Ten Commandments. He said, there will be rules, and if, we, if you obey those rules, then order will come. So, man... Man can stand and say, let there be, let there be, let there be. It will only work when that man has obeyed. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when God realized that in eternity, there was going to be chaos if he didn't do something about us. If he left us in the realm of we're slaughtering animals, some of us after a while will get tired. Messy middle will set up, set in. We won't slaughter animals again, which means we don't, we don't receive forgiveness of sin, which means we die unworthy. He could foresee eternal chaos. So what did God do? He sent his love. So every time you find order, God is in the midst of it. So how can God be in your life and it's chaotic? It must be you haven't made room for him. I know what I'm saying. I wish I could open my mouth, but I cannot. <laughs> Hallelujah. Every time a man steps out of order, trouble comes. If you look at 1 Samuel 13, Saul stepped out of order. He did what he had no clearance to do. And that was the end of him. If you looked at Leviticus chapter 10, Nadab and Abihu stepped into a frame that was not theirs. The Bible said they offered strange fire. And because of that, God slew them. It's your Bible, read it. But I want to finally take you to 2 Kings 20. 2 Kings chapter 20. I'll just... Cite it because I, I don't have the time to read it, but I'll cite it and then you can go home and read it. Second Kings chapter 20, verse 1 to 19. It's a really short chapter of the book of Kings. It's a chapter about Hezekiah. What was the message? In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, 
Thus says the Lord, set your house in order for you shall die and not live. God is telling us now, set yourselves in order. Some of us will begin to panic because panic was what Hezekiah did. I'm going to die, yay! And Hezekiah made it about himself. He became the project. Oh, Father, they said, set your house in order. Hezekiah decided to set himself in order. Father, I don't want to die. Father, I don't want to die. He cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. And God said, go back and tell him that I gave him 15 years more. In those 15 years, he made the greatest mistakes of his life. You know the account. He got 15 years more and his children, he prepared something down for his children to be carried away into captivity, number one. And they, were, they, they became eunuchs. You remember when I taught you the treasures of darkness, I told you that Mordecai was a descendant of Hezekiah. But not only did he do that, he opened the treasures of God to, to, the, to, the, to the enemy and they came, they carried the treasures away. It is because of that we have Isaiah 45. That's why God now had to appoint Cyrus to go back and bring the treasures. Every time God says, bring yourself to order and you think that you have this excuse why you shall not bring yourself to order. God forbid that you end up as Ezekiah. Because what I believe God is saying to us today is when he says put yourself in order. Number one, don't think just about yourself. Think about, it says, I, I wrote it here, ensure the eternal destiny of your family. If he says put, put your house in order, what you should be doing is talking to your children. Be talking to your spouse and say to them, Jesus is the answer. I've carried you this long. I don't think I can carry you anymore. Every conversation you have, close it with, please give your life to Jesus because that's the only way. Ensure that they have an eternal destiny in God. When you hear, put your house in order, think about godly legacy. Because in verse number 19 of this scripture in 2 Kings chapter 20, let me read from verse 18. And they shall take away some of your sons who will descend from you, whom you be, we beget. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. So Hezekiah said to Isaiah, The word of the Lord which you have spoken is good. For he said, Will there not be peace and truth at least in my days? Kai. Hezekiah decided that if in the 15 years that he had, if he was just fine and nobody bothered him, even if his children were taken, his sons were taken into captive and they were castrated in the process, it was okay. No legacy. When you hear, put yourself in order. I've told us before, let me say it again, that when God gives a word, it's usually about your future because your past is finished, your present, you're almost done. It's always about the future. You want to make more money, if that is your big audacious, hairy audacious goal, master the one you have now. Have you been a good steward of what you have? Most of us are not good stewards of our money. You want more people. You come to pray, Father, benefactors, in the name of Jesus. The ones that we opened the door for me, like the, the ones you have, what have you, you've disrespected every relationship you've had. And God is saying, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? It is time for you to recognize that God is stepping in. But because, when he steps in, he wants to see that there's nothing wrong with you first. Order. 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 Those who live in order do not make it about themselves. Those who live in order do not, how will I say it, are not selfish. Because Hezekiah was full of selfishness. He said, hey, Shebi is my children and my children's children you're talking. I know who good day here. Let whatever will happen to them happen to them as long as I have peace. 15 years that you did not even deserve myself. 
You took those 15 years and you destroyed generations behind you. Can you see what I can see? Can you see what I can see? They're like, Stabi, we were excited. Now we are sober. But we need to be. Because what is at head of us is so good that we cannot be the ones that mess it up. Order. Don't put the cat before the horse. Follow due process. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of us feel like this is a word that we can walk with? How many of us feel like the chaos is there? It's just that fine plots, they cover many things. So we don't even know. Then I want you to flip to a brand new ch ch page in your book, in your notepad. And I want you to do a list of the things that require order. Because this is not the message you hear and you go home. Say, I don't hear. You need to do something about it. What are the things that need ordering in your life? Write them down. Write them down. If by the 20th you have to borrow money, that nonsense needs to stop. Then your last borrowing was January 20th. Determine. I'm not saying you are getting more money yet. What I'm saying is, from February the 20th, start a fast. If the money finish fast. I know someone will be like, what's she talking about? I'm telling you the only way to master your money. It's already not enough. Why are you borrowing? So by the end of the month, when you get the new salary, 50% of it is gone to Bessie. By the 15th, you're done again. Back to your, That's why those Chinese loan people are always sending you test message. Because you are their customer. And the sad thing is after a while, you can't pay. Then they'll begin to call me because I have your number on my phone. I will block you and block them together. I don't have time. If they call one of you and they say, your relative, and they mention your name, I will block you, I will block them. Then on Sunday, I will use you to teach. So you can, <laughs> you can do two things. You can either stop or you can block me already from your contacts. Anyone is fine by me. But sometimes, you know, I learned there was, there was a day I couldn't master money. It was this grace that God used to teach me how to master money. Because don't they tell me small smile, I know here. No buy what you know fit afford, I go buy them. No take anything on me, say I will take it on the day when they show up. When I started to hide from people, one day I sat and I looked at myself after I sweated for many, many hours, and my sisters just left me there. There was nobody even coming, my creditor was not coming. But God used my sisters to teach me something. They hid me in this room that had only one tiny window. I sweated for like two hours. There was no telephone call to send WhatsApp. To, there was no mobile phone to send WhatsApp to say, she don't, Sophie don't go. I will never forget her name. <laughs> so I just stayed there and I was waiting for them to come and knock on the door. When they eventually came to knock on the door, I don't sweat, I don't lose 2 kg. But I thought about my life sitting in that room. And I asked myself, why are you doing this to yourself? And I realized... His grace is not good for Moluapi. <laughs> and I said to myself, never again. Never again. So before you say amen, be ready to cut, sew your dress according to your piece of cloth. You don't need to be making a boo-boo if you can only make a, a, a pair of pants. <laughs> Why you they sew boo-boo? When now only two years you get. Tell us, say, ah, madam, now only two years, so he say, add cloth for him for me. I go pay you. How about you just make a danshiki? It looks like boo boo, it's just short. <laughs> my brothers and my sisters, God wants us to bring order. 
bring order. Bring order. Bring order to the way you speak. Bring order to the places you go. Just get up in order. That's the word. I know mm, you may not like it, but what can you do about it is the word. Let's obey this. Because again, there is a brightness ahead of us like none of us has ever seen before. But before you get there, is your house in order? Or are you mortgaging the lives and the destinies of your children for five minutes chicken now? How many of us know that the chicken we ate yesterday, we can't eat it again today? Father Lord, thank you. Let your word, O oh God, as the Yorubas would say, aboro. It may not be exactly explicit or, you know, and fully understood the way you, I have been able to bring it to you. But I'm praying that God will make it, he will magnify it, he will bring it to a place where you understand it. So that in understanding it, you will be able to run with it. We've got to get our lives in order you don't need a car if you have to borrow money to buy fuel why oh you have to send people test message please hey, I beg for no day my car you get Camino gets how far go and sell it you don't need a car if you can't fuel it sell it and use the money to create wealth ah it's that B. I'm used to driving myself I can't jump buses. Jump where? Let's quickly repair what is broken so that we have a long life of greatness. Let's not live above our means. Let's not get ourselves entangled in situations that, don't, that are a mess for us just so that God can be proud of us. Who wants God to be proud of him? Jesus, Jesus, my love. Come on. I want to make you smile. Jesus, Jesus, my heart. I want to make you smile. I want to make you smile. Jesus, Jesus, my love. I want to make you smile. I want to make you smile. Jesus, Jesus, my love. I want to make you smile. I want to make you smile. Jesus, Jesus, my love. I want to make you smile. I want to make you smile. life but it's feeling like it is hard I want you to rise on your feet because we're going to pray together you say Lord I want this order but it's hard I don't even know where to start from but Lord I want order 
I want to bring order to my life. Zebra tasika taleme gelega dos. Ike sente lima gadeke te libra dada duzim patula meka te lega dos. If you are online, please stand as well because God sees you where you are standing. Eseke te libra dadi zadama gadeesh. I said if you want to bring order into your life and you are not sure where to start, I said stand on your feet. Break a city, Makuta Liga, Lagada Dosha, Eshe Pradu Sunto Lima, Gadeca Tayema Guta Tibra, Isanta Ligade, Bedeca Temiga do Sakanda, Yekete Libra doso, Esika Tayima Catila Gadu, Eshe Brada Sente, Brekete Mika Tula Gada Dada 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 I want to make you smile. Jesus, Jesus, my Lord. I want to make you smile. I want to make you smile. your hands to heaven because I told you that order is to a call for assistance is a call for help is a call to be served if you would lift your hands to the God of heaven he'd carry you and then he by himself can help you order what needs to be ordered we need help today Lord we need help Lord I need help today Lord I need help I want to make you, you proud, oh God. I want to make you smile. And Lord, I'm saying that by myself, I cannot do it. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need your help. Teach me, oh God, what to do. Grant me the courage to do what needs to be done. Lord, I want to bring order to every mess. I want to bring order to every chaos. Lord, help me. Lord, help me, oh God. Lord help me oh God 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 Help me Lord In Jesus name Brethren do you know what Hezekiah did Hezekiah is like the man who was wealthy blew all his money in our present day and reduced his children to setting up a GoFundMe go to bury him. Because he blew it all off. I said you should pray and say, Father Lord, I need your help. My life is a mess. You have ordered order. And I want to align. Help me, O oh God. Help me, O oh God. Mention the things you'd written in your notes. Lord, this I need order here. In how I spend my time. In how I spend my money. In the places that I go. Wherever, oh God, I need your help. Not over, wherever, oh God, I need order. I am speaking this money and asking that you help me. In the name of Jesus. Father Lord, behold your children. Both in this room and online, oh God. Father Lord, you know where the chaos is. Lord, we invite you.